Hello everyone and welcome to this video tutorial over understanding the core database concepts which is lesson one in your database administration fundamentals for your Microsoft 98-364 certification. So this is just a brief summary of the chapter to help you in preparing for your exam. Let's go ahead and take a look at the various objectives that will be covered during this video tutorial and the chapter. So the objectives you're going to cover are understanding database concept. You're going to go through these in the chapter and we're going to go over various concepts that you may know or may be getting introduced to for the first time. We'll also be going over understanding what a relational database is. The next objective in the chapter is over understanding data manipulation language or DML and then understanding DDL or data definition language. But before we dive into that, let's just give a clear definition of what a database is. And a database can be defined as an organized collection of data typically stored in an electronic format. Obviously electronic format, we're not going to be doing any kind of databases on paper of course. And a database allows you to input data, you can once you have that data input then you can organize that data into a fashion that you can use better for understanding the data and then retrieving any of that data quickly. And you may have used Microsoft Access in the past or another database platform um, but you'll typically be referring to the databases as either Microsoft Access or the one that I'll introduce here shortly during this video lecture. And the traditional databases are organized by fields, records, and files. And just to go into that a little bit, like I said, this may be a little bit of review, but let's go over the terms that are typically used when talking about databases. A field is a location in a record in which a particular type of data is sorted. We also have columns, which is just an attribute for a row or record. And a row is a record within a table. So you've probably used Microsoft Excel before or other spreadsheet software. And you've, some of these terms are probably familiar to you there. You can think of a row as just going uh, left to right, those, those horizontal um, pieces of information. And a column is the up and down or vertical areas. And then a field is just the intersection of those two. So hopefully that triggers a little bit of your previous knowledge as well as helping you understand a little bit of the database essentials. And then a table is a database object consisting of rows that we just talked about and those columns. So when you put those together, that is a table. And a record, as I already previously described, is just a data structure that is a collection of fields, those elements there, each with its own name and type that appear in a table as a group of fields across one row. So as you that all as you go across that row, that is one record. You can think of a database table, as I said, as an Excel spreadsheet that contains rows and columns. The data in one table may need to reference data in another. And you know when you work with a spreadsheet, you can have multiple worksheets in that spreadsheet. And that's where we're saying that a data in one table may need to reference data in another. So as you have one table, multiple tables, you might need to pull information from each of those tables. And we'll get into that more later. In the book and with the Microsoft certification, instead of Microsoft Access, we'll pretty much just rely on Microsoft SQL Server. And if you want, you can go out and download the server and there are some sample databases that you can work with called the AdventureWorks databases that you can upload into your Microsoft SQL Server so that you can toy around and, and work with SQL and, and get familiarized with databases more using Microsoft SQL. Um, so here, when you're working with Microsoft SQL, you can know that you're working with three different types of files to store the database. You have your primary data files. Now, when you these have an .mdf extension. So if you do decide to work with the AdventureWorks database, for example, when you're uploading that into your Microsoft SQL Server, you would make sure that you're getting the AdventureWorks .mdf file as your primary data file. This is going to contain all the user-defined objects, all the tables and the views that have been created for those tables, as well as the system tables that are needed. Now there are also secondary data files, and these have a .ndf extension. That's how you identify a secondary data file. And these are if you kind of run out of room and you need more room, 
that's what you can use these NDF files for on a separate physical hard drive area. So if you're working with servers and you you need to expand onto that, um, let's say you're you've run out of room, you need you're putting in more hard drives in that server, you can use these NDF files for that. And then lastly, the third type of files associated with SQL servers are the transact transaction log files and these are an LDF file extension and these don't contain any objects such as tables or views. So as with most transaction log files or log files in general what this really doing is that this is just what all is happening with the database. It keeps a record of everything that's being done with the database and you pretty much use this for rollback purposes if necessary. So now that you know a little bit about how the Microsoft SQL Server uh, uses those three types of files, let's talk about a database management system. Now, most users don't really access the database itself. Instead, they're going to use a database management system to access those databases on the, on the back end. Now, a database management system is just like it says here. It's a collection of programs or a software package that's just designed to define, manipulate, retrieve, and manage data in those da in that database or databases. Uh, generally, it's going to manipulate the data itself, the data format, field names, record structures, and file structures. It's also going to define rules to validate and manipulate this data. And now a database management system relies users or relieves its users of framing programs for data maintenance. So it's going to do the work for you. That's going to be your interface. So that's pretty much what we'll be talking about uh, to get you comfortable with. And you can, like I said, if you're using the SQL Server and using uh, the DBMS system for that, you will find that um, you can also use W3 Schools. At, with W3Schools.com, uh, when we reference that, there are a lot of activities we're going to do in there in which we will have access to the database and it's pretty much the one that I talked about earlier so you will be able to work inside there and not have to download SQL Server and stuff like that so it's, it'll take it away all that work for you but if you just want to expand on your knowledge and work with the database management system you can go in and use that tool that we'll introduce here shortly and that is the SQL Server Management Studio and that's the primary tool to manage the server and the databases using a very easy GUI so that is if you decide to go that route you can do that on your own I uh, just want to break down the chapter for you a little bit here but you have options you can work with SQL Server and SQL Server Management Studio or you can use the W3 Schools uh, tutorials that we'll go over later to practice your structured query language. All right, there's three different types of databases that we'll talk about. You have the flat type, the hierarchical, and the relational database. Now the flat type is very simplistic in its design. They are mostly used in plain text formats uh, with a .txt extension as our purpose is to hold one record per line making the access performance and queries very quick so once again they are just pretty much two-dimensional tables and we look at the hierarchical database design it's similar to kind of a tree structure so if you look at like Windows Explorer um, you will see you'll get a kind of feel of what that is you're gonna have a parent or a folder you can say if you're referencing like Windows Explorer and then you'll have items under that folder or within that folder kind of like a branch that can only have that one parent that main folder so it's just a general rule to remember each parent can have multiple children but each child can have only one parent so here's an example of a hierarchical database as you can see in this example the parent table holds the employee data up here and each row or record provides an employee's information and you can see so that information is her, his or her employee number which is you can see in the column heading is impnum and just that type of information but then we have the child table down here that holds the computer equipment data and you see where the impnum field is tied to the parent table up here because we're using a hierarchical database we can assign multiple computer devices to each employee 
based on this hierarchical scheme. And lastly, which pretty much is most importantly here, is the third type, which is the relational database. And it's similar to the hierarchical database in that data can be stored in tables and any new information is going to be added into the table without the need to reorganize the whole table itself. But it's different because it can a relational database can have multiple parents. And I've got an example here to show you to help understand that concept and the difference between the hierarchical and the relational database. And in this example here, you can see that the first parent table here, parent table one, shows that the salespeople within a company, and the second parent table lists the different product models for that company that are sold by that company. And if you look down to the child table, you'll see that it lists customers who have purchased various models from the company. The child table is linked to the first parent table here by the sales num or sales number and it's also linked to the second parent table by the model. And you can see how those relationships are drawn on this pseudo uh, entity relationship diagram just to kind of get you ready for some stuff you'll be doing in the third week. So once again the important thing here is that the relational database is different from the hierarchical database in that the relational database can have multiple parents for a table or a child table.